Welcome to the podcast, Everything But The Show. We're so glad you've joined us. Be sure to check out our website, everythingbuttheshow.com to learn more about us as well as our partners. Like Compassion Live, Proper Management, CTS AVL, Belmont University, and more. This is the show where you'll hear stories from the road, fascinating interviews, as well as tips and strategies to help define your roadmap for life. Everything But The Show is hosted by two music industry veterans, Eric Kilby and Mike J. They have more than 45 years of combined experience in the music industry, so you're in great hands. Thanks for spending some time with us today as we unravel and unpack what happens behind the scenes of the music industry. Now, sit back, relax, and let's talk about Everything But The Show. Hey, thanks for listening to this week's episode of Everything But The Show. I'm Mike J. And I'm Eric Kilby. It's been a big week, man. It has been. It's been a fun week. It has been a fun week. It's been a fun week with the show. We're in 16 countries, apparently, already. It's unbelievable. 16 countries. Who knew? I thought we were going to be in like three states. I know, right? (laughs) We're really encouraged and hope that you guys can get something out of this and it's encouraging to you as well. Uh, What's encouraging to me is we're starting to have some live events. Yeah. We've just announced a bunch of drive-in theater shows and tailgate outside, socially distanced events staying healthy but having fun yes so. and it's just a great reminder and i think people really need this right now yeah i'm grateful for all the teams of people that are working so hard to put these together and yes. make it happen and be creative yeah. get the band back together get the crew working again it's been a hard time for a lot of people yeah and uh it's part of the industry sometimes yeah. and it's fe- feast or famine yeah for sure but we just hang in together yeah i think it's good to just check your local listings and see what shows are near you and they keep popping up often and so we're always adding more shows around the country so be sure you check that yeah go see support your artists yeah, out there see what's coming out soon and another cool thing we, we did our release party your yes. amazing wife created these cool t-shirts for us we wore for the party and we started getting messages about the t-shirts hey can i get one <laughs> yeah where do well, i get one guess what you can get one now right. they're we, officially available we have an official merch store and it's a it actually is a great way to support the show so it if is. you like the show and like t-shirts you can do it right there just pick one up yeah they're affordable and you can get one today just go to the website it's everything but the show.com and then you can click on store and you'll see the options we have available there well, man, I, I got to tell you, doing these shows, it doesn't happen without buses. We all love buses. I still get giddy yes. when I'm riding down the road, wherever we are, and I see buses. I'm like, who's on the bus? Yes. And my family kids are like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> what's the fascination with the buses? Right. You're like, it's still, I don't know. It yeah. just interests me. It's yes. just one of those things. Yes. But that is a huge element to our industry, especially in touring. It's how we get everybody from point A to point B. Through the years, I've heard so many questions and just overall curiosity about the buses and yeah. more than anything else, you know, about fuel and who's driving. Are they RVs or yeah. are they, what, what are these things? What's the sleeping arrangements? Yeah. All those things. How do things. you get a job driving one of those buses? <laughs> right. <you know? laughs> who's up in there? And uh, and so our guest today is probably one of the most diverse list of clients than anyone we know. Uh, they've worked extensively in almost every genre, rock, pop, Christian, country, and more. They've served theatrical performances, TV shows, movie stars, sports teams, and they've also worked with the president and the Secret Service of the United States. That's pretty impressive. Um, They've appeared on Oprah, VH1, HGTV, the Travel Channel, and they've won many awards throughout the years as well. They've been in the bus business for 40 years, and they're still rolling strong. They started out with two buses in 1980, and today their fleet includes more than 115 coaches and over 200 employees. They're truly some of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, and we consider it an honor and privilege to sit down and talk with them today about something that we all love, and that would be buses. Let's welcome the owners of Hemphill Brothers Coach Company, our dear friends, Trent and Joey Hemphill. Good to see you guys. Hey guys. Thank you, guys. Man, this is awesome. We love talking about buses, don't we, Trent? We do, Eric. Thanks. Thanks for having us. I feel like if there's anything that you could talk about, it's probably buses. Absolutely. We've been around them almost our whole life, Yeah, basically. It's true. How old were you when you first stepped on a bus? I was probably about four years old. Okay. Our, our mother's family was the old Happy Goodman family. Oh, which wow. Was, yes. yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. That was her family. Yeah. We lived in Louisiana, and that bus occasionally would come pulling in our driveway. 
I remember one day getting off the school bus. I was maybe eight or nine years old. Mm. There's the Happy Goodman. And that had the name, the Happy Goodman family yep. on the side of the bus. Sure. And I was so proud to get off that bus because there was my family and that yeah. bus there. So Trent and I grew up around him our whole lives. Yeah, yes. we were fascinated from day one. But when that bus, I remember days like that when you would get home and an entertainer bus back in the 60s was so rare. It's not like, you know, today in Nashville, just about every street corner, yeah. especially if you come to our exit, you'll see a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Especially back, right now. That's yes, right. Yeah. Back then, it was very rare to even see an entertainer bus, mm-hmm. custom, fully custom bus. Mm-hmm. We went up in the bus and there was a little, about a 12 inch TV. Wow. Mm-hmm. In the front lounge, there was a side aisle of the bus, and along the side, up where the window, there would be a little vent window, would open all the way down, and you could look all the way down the hall. You reach up, and there was Wrigley's gum of all different flavors, packs <laughs> of it, down. lined wow. all the way down, 40 feet. Wow. Of, so the, so Wrigley as gum. children, you know, we we're like, that. this we is love. heaven. This is amazing. <laughs> then our family traveled. I traveled for 20 years yeah. on a bus, you know, from 1969 to 1989 uh, with my family, two million miles on a bus Uh and singing Southern gospel music. So we just grew up loving buses and and it's still in our blood uh, after all these years. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't do something that long at such a high level unless you love it. We don't get into the music business because we just kind of, man, let's just try this. You may try it, but you don't do 40 years at a high level unless unless it's in your blood. You know, we're second stage manufacturers, so we buy the empty shells, build them out. And our guys, they laugh at me and Trent because they know they're going to hear the same thing. We'll walk up on the bus and say, man, this is the most beautiful bus I've ever seen. Yes. You know? yes. And, and we've been doing this 40 years. Right. And it's, it's so important that we still have input. We have a lot of client input, which yeah. is great. It's challenging, but it's exciting. It keeps it fresh for us because they usually know they travel the world. Our customers do. They know the latest and greatest uh, staying in the finest hotels or homes. So So we get their input, but also being on the road with our own family for so many years, Mm -hmm. riding in a bus gave us and gives us an insight on what's needed. You know, we try to get that right first. Mm -hmm. And then we, of course, we try to make them as nice and comfortable as possible. So the combination of our experience of riding on the the buses ourselves and then getting that input from our customers makes i think our buses you know as nice as they can be Mm -hmm. for what we do yeah so let's talk for a little bit here so maybe some folks listening to the show have never been inside of a bus and maybe Mm -hmm. they don't really understand it but they go to the shows and they walk by the fence and they see them all parked backstage so explain a little bit about the process and you said you buy the shells from the manufacturer explain what that means when they get to you what's in them at that point and what you guys then do to them when we get a shell we call it a shell it's an incomplete vehicle it can't be licensed and titled and put on the road at that point it's right. wood floor insulated walls and you got a driver's seat right okay so we do everything else we're second stage manufacturers we have a crew many of these guys have been with us for so long i mean they know the expectations that we have as far as quality and they're all craftsmen we have Mm -hmm. upholsters electricians i mean we've got guys that used to wire military helicopters working for us you know so we add six miles of wire when we build out six miles yeah Mm -hmm. six miles of wire to the shell we have the big diesel generator that runs the electronics and the auxiliary air conditioning and all that if you're sitting still and so there's so much that goes in there it has to be very compact then because we are doing transportation for artists we have to have the latest and greatest of everything as far as electronics sure you mean artists are picky they're picky you know (laughs) (laughs) you know they're they're kind of almost a little home on wheels because you really need sleeping area you need restrooms mm-hmm. seating area refrigerators there's kind of kitchen area so it's kind of like a home rolling down the highway yeah. and you got to make it compact because you only have so much real estate to work with right yes it's not like you can just lengthen the bus by 20 feet right and so you got to make it compact what are some of the examples of some things that may not be on every one but maybe you customize for a client 
Well, you know, when we have a client come in and we build it specifically for them, Mm -hmm. then that opens up a whole lot of other areas. And when we sit down with a client, we find out what their needs are and you, you get that first. And so a lot of our clients, you know, they'll have children, maybe babies need cribs. You know, we did trundle beds up under the queen size bed. You push a button and this other little bed comes out for the child to sleep. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, cribs that fold down out of the closet wall. You know, that there's just a closet face there and fold it down. And now it's a crib Mm -hmm. in the room. But just a little bit of everything. I remember Harry Connick Jr. calling you one day and saying, I'm sending a piano to put in my bus Steinway <laughs> and, and Trent went no he first, you first I remember that you first said now you are talking about like a keyboard right he said no this is an upright piano an upright piano it was a <laughs> ship from New York FedEx FedEx it landed at our shop oh my goodness <laughs> we had to take the windshield front windshield out of the bus doors out you know, to get it inside, to get the it bus. in, oh. yeah. and then move it in there with the guys and fasten it down where it wouldn't move, and then going down the highway, he's playing his music. Well, <laughs> you guys may know Paul Hortop; he's one of our drivers. I and, do know and, Paul, and, and yeah. we called Paul one day, and he said. Man, this is great. He said, I'm driving, and there's Harry back there playing that piano. That's, <laughs> fant- uh, that's great. Yeah, you want to know the stories, talk to the drivers. Yeah. They have they seen it, it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's so much about the road that is not glamorous. It's right. hard. It's grueling. And at the end of the day, to be able to hop on the bus and feel at home, mm-hmm. to feel comfortable, that's a huge deal. Because we don't all have great bus experiences This was probably 97 and showing up to bus call and every manager's trying to save money, right? (laughs) There's just some places people don't skimp on your bus. Pro tip number one today. (laughs) Yeah. Don't skimp on the bus. You'll you'll regret it. I like that, Mike. (laughs) (laughs) Keep talking. So I learned early on that's not going to work. And he didn't have to ride on them. He was just trying to save a buck. And I'm showing up and I get back after every weekend and said, dude. You cannot put us on the bus anymore. That was terrible. <laughs> I show up one night at the Brentwood Kroger, and there's these beautiful buses. I was like, oh, thank goodness. He made a good choice. And then I look over. I'm like, oh, I bet that's my bus. <laughs> and it's this old 40-foot eagle with these fighting stallions on the side. They're kind of all it. faded out. And I'm like, uh. I open the door. The driver's sitting there. I was like, uh, uh, how you doing, man? Who you got tonight? He's like, uh, I got a... Uh, Clay uh, Crossy. <laughs> well, it's Clay Cross for one. I was like, pleased to meet you. It's, uh, I'll be riding with you this weekend. Oh, wow. It was a disaster. Yeah. And not only that, we were going to Dallas, Texas. That It was a one-off. We were going to Dallas for a show at Six mm. Flags, and we were back the next day. It was in the middle of August, and I the bus was parked on the tarmac behind the stage at Six Flags. They had a little temperature gauge up on a tree back there in the middle of the day, and it's like 110 degrees on this tarmac. <laughs> And sometime in the middle of the day, the artist, come, Clay, comes off, uh, hey, Mike, the, the the air's not working. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So there's a lot of things that, you know, you have to fix during the day as a road manager. Yeah. That's not one that you want to hear. And no, your driver's no, asleep. No. Mm. Yeah. I mean, we were hosed, and we had to make the trip back to Nashville that night. <laughs> Miserable. And, I mean, no one entered the bunk area. It was absolute inferno. Everybody's so, sleeping. There is nothing hotter yes. than a bus that's when it. the air conditioning it just exactly got right. hotter i mean and nothing. and he had a, he had his family on the bus that weekend the bass player the late great jackie street was in the back lounge of the bus and i'm asleep in the captain chair up front and clay comes up to me he's like hey mike uh, i need you to come see this <laughs> i love it i went to the back and and jackie it was like an emergency window in the back on the side of the bus a little latch and he opens it up just to get a little airflow back there <laughs> and i guess a semi truck passes and it it loosened that little latch and the window flies up so jackie oh reaches gosh. up to grab it right <laughs> at that time another semi passes us this window comes unhinged and just explodes on the interstate i go back there the entire side of the back of the bus is gone <laughs> it was unbelievable and that's just one trip one week one show right? after that trip, and back. the manager yeah. got a call from the artist and we didn't use that bus company anymore you know that's a good time to interject that yes. hill brothers is still in business and that's you need right. to call us. That's yeah. right. So, Clarification, yeah. that was not, not a hemp bus. bus. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I can guarantee you that wasn't a hemp bus. I'll tell you a bus story that I had. So we used a bus when we were on the road before our family was really in the bus business. And 
we used a bus from a company and it had shag carpet on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> All of the framing inside was two befores in nails, uh-huh. no screws or anything like that. So I'm on the bottom bunk, sleeping on the bottom bunk, and I get up in the middle of the night to go to the restroom, okay? I get it's maybe three or four o'clock in the morning. I come back and our keyboard player at the time, Trent was playing bass at that time mm-hmm. for our family, mm-hmm. and he, then he started playing keyboard. His head was in my bunk, okay? <laughs> the bunk had fallen down, and when, we, when he got out of the bunk and we pulled it up, there were two nails sticking in my pillow. Oh, my. So, <laughs> you picked a good time to go to the restroom. <laughs> two nails. I don't think I slept the rest oh of the night. You know, we, no. So we had to go to a hardware store and put it all back together. So that, that was mm-hmm. back in the 80s, 70s or 80s. Yeah, you know, so. mm-hmm. that's a great thought. As you're on the road, I mean, you got got 100 plus buses that you, in normal season of touring, they're pretty much all gone, right? right. They're all Correct. busy. They're mm-hmm. around the country. What system do you have in place? So if something breaks down at 3 a.m., explain a little bit about that process. How right. do you guys handle that? Well, we have an on-call mechanic or just a liaison that's just incredible. He knows buses from front to rear. He's worked on them in our shop. He drove for us as well. And so he has shops all over the country that work with him and he can call them at any time yeah he doesn't even come to work you know he doesn't come to our company he works from home okay and he has a network of people that he has built up Mm. over the years yeah we have staff meetings on friday mornings that he's there and he kind of tells us of course we can hear from him through the week if there's issues but by friday he kind of tells us what's happened that week but we pretty well know but we get into further detail Mm -hmm. about it that's the first line of defense is him and many times he can talk the driver through an issue and get you rolling again without even calling a mechanic okay right yeah there are other times when the bus is say it's developed a problem but it's not a critical problem but it could turn into a critical issue that he lines up a shop or a mechanic in route where the bus will stop have work done and will keep rolling and the artist will wake up the next day and didn't even know, didn't even know. that the mm-hmm. bus was for a couple hours right. just kind of like fueling a bus or something right. it's pulled in and a, and a guy will work on it and then the bus rolls again and yeah. just keep rolling his yeah. name is tom jones okay but you don't want to hear him sing okay? <laughs> <laughs> tom <laughs> different tom jones yes yes, yes. So, so uh you know and also we have on-call mechanics uh, you know tom can call this guy at our shop and if we need to send somebody in a truck mm-hmm. if we need to counter to counter parts we will do whatever and we is do necessary. fly mechanics we so. fly mechanics mm-hmm. or, or conversion crew people i mean whatever it takes to keep the show on the road yeah yes because that's know. the name of the game is if you have a client or a crew or anybody in this industry if they don't get to where they're going nothing else matters yeah any given night when trent and i go to bed at night we can have at least a thousand people run it up and down the highway on our coaches yeah if we don't have confidence in those drivers, in our equipment, in the mechanics, and all the people that work for our company, we couldn't sleep at night. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. And there's even a higher power than that mm-hmm. that we believe in, rely on, uh, and rely yeah. on for our comfort and for our security. Yeah, and that's God. I, I believe He has guided us and given us this job mm-hmm. to do. And you know, you got to have a servant's heart to do what we do. Yeah, you got to say, you know what. Whatever it takes, let's let's figure it out. Yeah, yeah, let's figure it out. One thing that we do, Eric, the like the top ten list of issues that, that can develop on the road, mm. we have those on the bus. The okay. parts. So spare parts you spare carry. Spare parts, oh. there's there's a tote in each bus and it's several thousand dollars. So you multiply that times a hundred and fifteen. Yeah. Just think about yeah. how what an investment that is just in parts rolling around the country. But many times the driver will, if there's an issue, he can pull into a truck stop or somewhere, talk to Tom, and then he's got the part there with him. Mm -hmm. It can be hoses, bearings, belts, belts, you know, things like that. Things that aren't that difficult to change, but are very hard to find. Especially in the middle of the night. They're (laughs) specific for that vehicle. Yeah, I've seen you guys even, you know, you've replaced a windshield, and I'm thinking... We're broke down with a broken windshield on the side of the road in middle of nowhere. <laughs> where, where do I find Where one? do I find a Prevo uh-huh. windshield? Right. And somehow 
I get ready to get on the bus that night and it's been fixed. And I don't know how it happened, but I know that there's been a team of people that have done that. Another thing we'll do too, if, you know, some tours, we'll do a tour that has 18 coaches on Mm -hmm. one tour. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we do then is we'll take several buses and put parts on there. Sometimes tires extra parts that the tour doesn't even know we have out there that's right uh-huh. yeah but they're uh, thankful when they break <laughs> that we do yeah this all just speaks to the importance of team and getting it all done because there's so many teams that it takes to put these shows on your team of professionals in the bus company world production with sound lights video all of these pieces and there's so many moving parts that yeah. anything can and will go wrong and that you're prepared so as we hire the right pieces of the team to be a part of the show there are so many things that happen and go wrong in a day Mm. that the artist never knows about and that's when you look around and say these guys have it going on because it would be disastrous if there was something going on and the artist is having to worry about that every day it's true you know you can tell when a band has been together for a while Mm. if you if you go to show a concert and you hear a band that has been playing music together for a long time, they kind of know what the other person is going to do. That's right. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's the way I feel about our company. Mm -hmm. We've been in business for for 40 years. Now, not everybody has been with us for 40 years, but the majority of the people that work for us have been with us 10, 15, 20 years. They know the culture. Yeah. And they're not just a number Mm -hmm. or just a name. They're part of a family that works together. And we know that if we work together like that, we can win. We can make it all work. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it's great to watch our, our shop work with our drivers and our accounting people work with the different aspects of our business and, and the booking agents. Every aspect of the business working together makes it run pretty smoothly overall. Yeah. It speaks to your humility and leadership skills yeah, and, and never having a big head. It's like, you know, well, you, I mean, we're kind of a big deal. We've got all the biggest shows on the road. Uh, you know, you name them, we've got them out on the. And you, you guys never rest on that. You well, just keep making one, buses. one phone call when you have an issue can kind of deflate oh, that feeling <laughs> pretty quick. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> you just, it's better just to stay more even keeled on all that mm-hmm. and just focus on the day to day. And what Joey was talking about, all the various parts of our company coming together. What's so important is then that translate to a better experience on the road. Yeah. yeah. Like Mike indicated, you know, at best the road is hard. Yes. yes. You right. know, it, It's not glamorous. I mean, we try to build the most luxurious buses we can, but they're a necessity. Mm -hmm. They're not just, you know, they're not just for luxury. They're used. Mm -hmm. Our vehicles are used for a purpose. Yes. And so if we can take the bumps out of the road for our clients at all, that's what we're here for. I know there's an Aretha Franklin story. Right. I would love to hear you share, if you don't mind. Uh, she liked to call herself and book buses. Our <laughs> she would call you personally. She would call and, you know, whoever answers the phone there, and then the, they transfer her to usually Valerie Bale, who's yeah. one of our lease agents. Uh, they kind of built a rapport. And Miss Franklin would call. And one day, Valerie brought in an envelope, and she pulled out a New York Times and then folded out the New York Times was a check, a personal check from Miss Franklin to Hemphill Brothers. So okay. she she folded it so you wouldn't know it was a check when she right. mailed it. But just a, a great lady, and we did her touring for many years, yeah. and uh, very proud of that. So I've, I've got a Van Halen story. Okay. okay. Oh yes, yeah. so, please. So Trent and I, you know, we started our business in 1980. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we only had like two or three buses mm-hmm. by by '82. Okay, Van Halen is in Nashville, and they send a representative out to book a bus from us. 1982. 1982. Yeah. Well. And just so happened we had just done a lot of work. It was an old bus, okay? It was we couldn't afford a new bus at the it time. It was one of our original 65 models that yeah. we bought to get in the okay. business. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, but they booked this bus and at that time Trent and I had a one-page contract. And we're not attorneys, okay? <laughs> so we we're using our one-page contract. And so we signed the contract with them, and the tour was going to go several... Yeah, about four months. Four months. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it was going to have some breaks in between. And so our agreement with them was that 
during those breaks, we would take a third off the price while it was sitting. It okay. would be like week breaks, and so we. Yeah, it would sure. be ten day breaks. Ten I remember because yeah, yeah. it would. Yeah. Uh, I think we still have the contract mm-hmm. somewhere. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Trent and I typed up the contract, and they signed it. And then our check comes in after the first break. Well, it was a third of the price, you know. And so so we Trent calls. He calls the, the manager. The attorney and, there in, the attorney, in L.A. Yeah. Yeah. And says, you know, we've been shorted here. We didn't get all the money that we would agreed on. The guy said, go back and look at your contract. Oh, no. And one elf on that contract cost us thousands. Yeah, yeah wow. it cost us thousands oh, no. of dollars because we, instead of a third off the price, off, yep. it said a third of the price. Of the price. One so that letter. one elf that we left off the contract cost us thousands of dollars. Good old Tennessee education. <laughs> so let me tell you this. Uh, From then on, we reviewed our contracts. <laughs> Certainly that was a, financial that was a yes. learning experience right there. Yeah. Yeah. Every time a break rolled around and it was that, le- that lesser amount, you know, yeah. it was yeah, so felt painful. The pain. <laughs> felt the pain. Do you but, still look at that letter on the keyboard the same as you used to? <laughs> Not quite the same. And the interesting thing, we went down in 1982 to the Municipal Auditorium and met with him that evening and took our bus down there and and uh, it was a great experience. We go down there, and there's Van Halen, and David it, it's Roth. packed, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, and we're standing there watching the show. They invited us to watch the show. We were backstage, and and just a whole different environment, and the bus made the whole trip, the whole four months. It was the only bus and driver on the tour that, that stayed the whole time. Wow. Okay. So we, wow. we were on to something. Yeah. Even though it was an older bus, we had done our due diligence. Yeah. And also, earlier this year, Diamond Dave was on tour oh, they've with been one of our buses. Ever since. So there's yeah. 38 oh. years of with, touring with Van, Van Halen, Halen from wow. one, one phase or another when they, when they do the reunion tours. Still clients for the past 38 years. We went down to the Municipal Auditorium And so we were going to get our deposit money, okay? So they take us out to the bus, and there's this guy dressed in a business suit, okay? And then there's this one really big guy with this briefcase chained to his arm, okay? So they they take us out there, and we're sitting in the bus, and they open this briefcase. And Trent and I had never seen so much money in our life. We came from the Southern Gospel world. We didn't see that much money. They reached over in the corner and pulled out a little bit. It didn't even make a dent in the pile, okay? A little bit of money and handed it to us. And we're like, man, we're in the wrong side of this. The offering plate never looked like that. that. never looked like that. No, no. So anyway, that's our Van Halen story. I love that. Oh, my gosh. How many clients have you had for a long span of years like that? Many, many years. I would say Van Halen is probably the longest because we started so early with them the band rush yeah yeah were clients for well they gave us a watch that had their 40th Mm -hmm. on it but we had started doing their tours in about 87 so it was probably 35 years of dealing with uh with rush every time they were in the area we'd go see them i mean trent and i've actually sat on the bus before concert with neil pert Mm. and him playing classical music on the bus okay or him drive his motorcycle to the shop you know i remember trent going to meet in sync okay and they all got out and we'd never heard of them okay all got out of pt cruiser it was a purple pt cruiser (laughs) where was it we were down in orlando yeah and he took a bus down there with uh, had a driver take a bus and yeah they walked through you know they all walked through the bus and they had me step off of the bus. They had a business meeting on the bus, yeah, well, yeah, and I'm yeah. standing out there, I don't know, under a tree, you know. <laughs> What's happening on my bus? And after about 20 minutes, they came out, and they said, you got the contract. Yeah, so well, Justin's been a client ever since. That was know, about right? 99, so. Okay. We did Beyonce back when she was with Destiny's Child. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, we still do Beyonce tours, yeah. you know. So that's important to us. It's one thing. To get a client, it's another thing to keep a client. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's and a huge it's, thing. Yes. You know, Trent always equates it like when you cut down a tree and you see the rings, mm-hmm. you know, we don't want to just churn business. You yeah. know, we want to earn the business and we want to keep the business. Keep it, yeah. So uh, each ring is a each, year. You can kind of tell. Yeah. Yes. And, and then that tree grows. And that's what happened to us. Mm, In the so early cool. days, we couldn't afford new buses. Yeah. But we knew that the driver was the key mm-hmm. and we knew that the service that we could 
provide would be the key. The yeah. interiors, we would put everything that we could into that older vehicle. Yeah. And I remember the day that we were able to buy the first brand new uh, bus, and it was pretty awesome. Yeah. I was going to say, what a, of, yeah, what a of, feeling. Yeah, trying yeah. to save a buck, right? right yeah. You guys could have saved a few bucks here and there, and maybe you'd have been done 20 years yeah. ago. Possibly. But you did it right and yeah. invested it and, and, and created a great service and a great experience for everybody yeah gosh that's so fun i know you've done some work with the the president of the united states and right. the secret service and you've built some buses for them what can you share uh, about that experience or any of that that you'd like to share with our listeners well in in 99 we started getting calls about the primaries just using buses for candidates mm -hmm. and so we wound up doing a bus for governor george w bush in 99 and early 2000 and as he, and he won the nomination, and so he kept using us, and he started adding buses as he won the nomination. Then more and more buses were added to the, uh, to the route, and he would be flying in and out. Sure. And we, we felt like we had handled ourselves pretty well, and they really liked what we did. Mm. So that's really the start of the presidential campaign. He won the election. In 2000, then after that, in 2004, when he started doing the re-election, what was interesting there, he was governor running for president. But then when he became president, they have their own vehicles mm -hmm. issued by the federal government. Right. Secret Service does. So we didn't know if we'd ever hear from them again, but yeah. we did. Wow. And so the interesting thing was, though, that they leased our buses that we built and owned mm -hmm. for the president to ride in. Which is very unusual. That never yeah. happens. Right, yeah. Never happens. So if he goes overseas or whatever, they fly his cars in. You know, it's Marine One, it's the Beast, it's, you know, Air Force One, but there's really never any private vehicles that are carrying the president of the United States right. as a sitting president. Mm -hmm. So this is highly unusual for that to happen. Wow. And that was a great experience for us. That was 2004. Okay. And they wound up leasing, I think, maybe 16 buses by the end of the, that campaign season. I want to interject a little story there. Okay? Yeah, please. So he had two buses that were just alike. Okay. The president did. Mm -hmm. They were artist buses, star mm -hmm. buses. Mm -hmm. And we disassembled them. The Secret Service put some armoring in there, and then we put them back together. So we went to see President Bush, and he, they were only going to use them just for a short period of time. Just a few weeks. Okay. And we had one of the buses already scheduled to go on something else after that. So we go. He invites us to Eau Claire, Wisconsin, to a rally. So we get to meet the president and all this. It was pretty. Got our pictures. Our wives are there. And then we, we're about to leave, and this guy comes over to me and Trent and says, the president wants to keep these buses. And Trent and I go, well. <laughs> <laughs> They're already booked. Right. And, and the guy says, does he need to ask you himself? And our wives look at us and said, no, he doesn't. No, no. <laughs> that doesn't right. need to happen. So, right. so we actually went out and bought another bus okay. and put it on that tour that wow. we had. Then we built buses and then 2011 we had two buses that were built for the federal government mm. that we built okay mm. uh they're titled hemp hill brothers and they are fully armored vehicles in the secret service fleet so, and then so that so they're only used for the president uh, president right. obama used them okay and then i think vice president pence has used them and they they're used in so the still in service, and, service. right yep. but they realize that calling a private company like Hemp Hill Brothers and doing all those modifications and them kind of leasing buses like that versus owning their own. The answer for them was owning their own vehicles, mm -hmm. you know, right. and it went well, but they were always uncomfortable with that, to be honest with you, because they were just private vehicles. Mm -hmm. And we service those vehicles now, mm -hmm. and we do a follow-up vehicle when they use them. Uh, yeah. They still lease a bus from us yeah. to follow that bus up with technicians from us in yeah. the bus. One of the most difficult things was getting all of our employees, their secret clearance. To work, to work. <laughs> yes. Building. That yeah. is a challenge. Wow. <laughs> and you, build them. you found out 
things about some of the employees that you didn't know before. Absolutely. (laughs) They even seem surprised. (laughs) (laughs) One time I was 15 years old. Exactly. They They go go all the way back. That's right. It's probably a deeper search than just crossing into Canada. Yeah. Right. And so, so the drivers on those buses when they roll, is that, do they provide drivers or do you guys provide drivers? Well, we trained, uh, they picked some secret service agents that came in and then we did some training on our vehicles. And then we have certain drivers that are also cleared to to do that to mm-hmm. yeah that's great. very cool so fun owning versus leasing a bus that's one of the big questions artists have and they just want to buy their own bus and my advice is like i wouldn't buy a bus unless that's just what it takes for you to get it done because they think well it's just it's going to be cheaper it's never cheaper never. You know, there are certain reasons that you could buy a bus and, and own it instead of leasing it Mm -hmm. and i would say if you're really an established artist and have kind of an abbreviated kind of a short schedule and you've got a lot of money and you want to use this for even other things and you've got a place to store it and you've got people that you can have on staff all the time to deal with all your vehicles maybe planes yeah you know cars and a bus but if you're an artist that is doing a lot of traveling and your needs can change so quickly. Mm-hmm. We've seen that happen, you know, yeah. where what seemed to fit that artist that year, you know, we send that out as perfect. And two years later, the vehicle we sent would not work at all for that client. They're, they're, they've gotten yeah. married and they've got kids. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, right. I mean, it they can don't change. Want to be tra- you know, they're not traveling with a band anymore. So, you know, it, it can change. And technology yeah. changes so yeah, much. Mm-hmm. And what's so important is when you're dealing with a company like ours, you're getting the support, Mm -hmm. all the things we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. So if you're an owner and you own that one bus and the bus breaks down, who are you going to call in the middle of the night? You're kind of on your own. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to send another bus if necessary. Definitely mechanics or or whomever, you've got people that that you can call. And your costs aren't any higher because we cover the breakdown cost Mm -hmm. and uh, and getting you on to your show and all that. you kind of have a fixed – you, if you have a budget, then you know what, what your costs are going to be. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No matter what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What has changed in the bus business for the last 40 years? Everything. <laughs> That's the right especially, especially right now. Yeah. But I would say one of the biggest changes is when we first got in the business, the artist would tour to support an album, to support a record. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. A big tour when we first got started was three buses. You know, wow. Van Halen, three yeah, buses. Wow. Now, the last time they toured was how many, Trent? It was About 10 or 11. 10 or okay. 11. Mm-hmm. So the artists tour more now because they make so much more money touring, touring and to sales, yeah. with the merchandising and all mm-hmm. that. So that's one big change that we've seen. What's great about the technology is that the live experience is so awesome now. Yeah. You've got the big screens. You've got better sound, better lighting. Even the way that a show is set up where the artists, they've got runways or they may be playing in the round. The uh, fan can really feel close to the artist yeah. and be close at times. You can even tweet, you know, from the screen. It's amazing how you can yeah. interact. Interact. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I think that live experience is so awesome. Yeah. You just have people demanding or, or wanting the artists that are touring and even bands that haven't toured in a long time. We have a lot of legacy type bands that hadn't really been on the radio in a long time but they're filling arenas Mm -hmm. and they're taking 10 or 12 buses at a time and they're touring for months and months it's fun to see that you know one thing that has uh, and trent mentioned the technology when we first started building buses buying buses and you know you could wear out a bus you could wear out an engine in three hundred fifty thousand miles you know i mean you were done and now these engines that they put in these buses are, you know, we don't keep them for a million miles, but they are million mile engines. Yeah, okay. Sure. So the technology has gotten so good and the way they build them out and all that, the quality, course, the yeah. quality mm-hmm. has gotten so much better. Yeah. I feel like one thing that I've noticed in this is just the comfort of the ride. Yes. So the smoothness. Mm-hmm. And then also what most people wouldn't even, if you've never ridden a bus, you don't know this, but the quietness. Yes. Of the road noise, Mm -hmm. of the generator, of the engine. I mean, we can be going down the road and not even hear the thing Mm -hmm. running. That's not by accident. Okay. So what happens, we add so much more insulation now Mm -hmm. 
We've learned what areas that need to be insulated. Mm. You can whisper yeah. in a bus. Where you used to, when you wanted to talk to somebody, you were yelling, yeah, right. <laughs> trying to read yeah. lips. I've, you had, know? <laughs> I've had some people on the road, they, they'd get on a new bus that, that's so quiet like that, and they would almost complain because right. yeah. They, yeah. I can't sleep. Can't hear I the road noise. Yeah, I, I got this it. guy snoring next to me. <laughs> <laughs> you used to never, not hear him over the roar right, of the bus, yeah. and now you got to listen to your buddy yeah. snore. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then, so with when you used to deal with artists back early on in the day, did you demand payment up front? Did you trust their word? Did you show up to meet them? Did yeah. you, like, that's had to change. So uh, one of our earliest clients, like in about 81, we were leasing to Johnny Paycheck. He was a great singer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for you know, sure. Uh, and, but we would show up at the bus. Now, I'm 21 at the time. My brother's 22. <laughs> we're showing up, and before they leave, we demand cash, and so they'll okay. give us cash money, and then they get to go. So early on, we would had a few issues. Now, we really don't have payment issues like we did in the past, but that's one thing. So you would have. show up at bus call or wherever they would meet to leave? Or? They would leave from our gravel lot okay. over on Dickerson Road back in the day, okay. and we would just, you know, we knew their leaving time, and they would start loading the gear, and we just show up with our hand out. <laughs> uh-huh. See, for yeah. 10 years, 10 years of being in business, Trent and I were still on the road. Yeah. Okay, so we would do about three or four concerts a week. Yeah. So we didn't have the cell phones and all this. Yeah, right. you know? mm-hmm. So Trent and I, we'd set up in hotel rooms and make calls back to Nashville. For about 10 years, we had two jobs going. Yeah. We were we were professional musicians and singers, and we had this very small bus company. Bus business running, yeah. yeah. This reminds me, uh, one time, I'm at lunch, and Joey gets a call, and it's Ed McMahon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Man, and, I'm, I thought I had hit the lottery. Yeah. Did because, I win? No, I thought he had won, and he was going to buy me out. <laughs> Joey, Joey called me, said, man, Ed McMahon called. And there's no calls. mistaking that voice, you no. know. Right. And so, but he was asking specifically for me. So I hurry back to the office and call him, and he wants a bus. For, we were a little disappointed. Like, yeah. I thought Trent had won the sweet state. <laughs> yeah. It's just he a bus going to buy me out. <laughs> and, and oh, so, Ed McMahon, he wants a bus. <laughs> but he was, he was a real prince of a man. Yeah. And we wound up getting to know him pretty well. And he, he went to his house out in, in Beverly, Hills, Beverly Hills, and then we had lunch with him here. So he calls one day, and guys, I'm coming to town. Of course, he had this big voice, you yeah. know, Ed McMahon. Coming to town, his his wife is from Kentucky. Pam's from Kentucky. Mm-hmm. He says he wants to go to lunch. And so Trent and I think about the palm. We're like, we'll take you somewhere really nice. He said, Pam wants dumplings. <laughs> She's a country girl. <laughs> She's a country girl. So Kentucky. we took him to Cracker Barrel. Yes. Yeah. And so we're sitting in Cracker Barrel, and all these people are lined up. Well, they're watching it first, but when yeah. the first one walks up and they know that it's okay, then they all line up for the oh. rest of the meal. Oh. And, and, and everything was, how's Johnny? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and where's my check? And where's my check? Where's I mean, everybody check? that came by, and he yeah. was so gracious. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. Jerry House found out he was going to be in town. Okay. So Ed said, you know what? I'll do your show for one condition. you got to have the brothers on there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. He was a promoter. You know, Ed was, he was yeah. pushing yeah. up. So you we know. were on. On the house, we were on the show. Jerry House, house was Foundation. not happy about that right. part. No, of it. I bet. <laughs> but we go, uh, we listen to it later, and there's these two great radio voices. And Jerry then, House and Ed McMahon. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then my brother and I, we hear ourselves, and we sound like little mice <laughs> 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 squeaking. <laughs> Jerry House. What, what year, roughly, time uh, frame was that? That would have been in the early 2000s. I like, think that was the Star Search days. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, but yeah. he told a story, and he said the story he told was that you know he called down here and talked to me and said, yes, sir, yes Mr. McMahon. Man, we've got a bus. We can do a bus, no problem. And then, and then he said, the next thing I knew, there was an eight-page contract shows up <laughs> in my office that says you will do this, you can't do that, you have to do this. Oh my god! And uh, but so, that's we learned from Van Halen yeah. that you got to so get it all like, in the contract. He's like, These country bumpkins aren't quite as dumb as I thought they were. Right. <laughs> that, that was his point. It's more know? than one paragraph. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, golly. What's some of the fun things that you've got to do through the years with some of your clients? Mm -hmm. And we get to go down sometimes for rehearsals. Okay. You know, so we get to see the show before everybody else. Before the public. And I mean, I remember Keith Urban. 
you know, inviting us down to a rehearsal one mm-hmm. time, and that was pretty cool. Going to the White House for Christmas was, yeah, was yeah, great. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. one of, was one of our clients yeah. at the time. Yeah, so, that's so fun. You yeah. know, it's hard to remember I mean, all of I them. Mean, you know, just taking my little girl to see Gloria Stefan. Yeah. You know, she was one of our clients. In mm-hmm. Indianapolis, Gloria picks her up and holds her and says, I want a little girl. Well, it wasn't long that she had a little she girl. She had a little girl, know? yeah. So, so cool. That's the one thing you said before we started recording. We were just having some small talk around here, around the table. And you just said a comment that I'd love for you to just kind of elaborate on a little bit to our listeners. Our clients just happen to be famous. Right. And so they're yeah. just normal people. They're normal people. Yeah. They have needs. And they just happen to be well known. Yeah. And so when you kind of get past, you know, sitting in the room with mm-hmm. sometimes an you know Academy Award winning artists, if you can kind of just move past that to what their need is, and you kind of get on that level. I had one actress recently when she came on the bus, and I was kind of walking her through the bus, you know, showing her this. She says, "This is like your show on Extreme RVs." She said, <laughs> she said right. "We like, did a show on the Travel Channel, and she had seen it." Oh, so right. she says, "We watched that, you know." And so I'm like, "Oh my goodness!" Right. She's an Academy Award winning actress. Okay? Yeah, it's right. Like, wow. Right. Um, she saw your show. Yeah. Here, yeah. You know, I always get this question: Are these people nice? Okay. Are they nice? And it really depends on if the bus is working for them or not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but, you know, what I what I mean by that is everybody's just human. You know, yeah. people have good days, yeah. bad days. But for the most part, the people that we have dealt with, the professionals, have been very good to us, yeah. Our, yeah. our clients. Joey, I have one story. We were sitting in our offices here in Nashville, and our secretary comes in and says, Bob Dylan is here, and he kind of wants, to, wants to meet with you. And we're like, that's what we did. We're like, what? <laughs> He's playing a joke on us today. Yeah. So sure enough, uh, he was in town, stopped by, and wanted to look around, look at our buses and mm-hmm. all. And so he kind of had a hoodie on. Yeah, He's kind of like a prize, prize fighter looking thing yeah. for a while. And then later on, you know, he kind of opened up a little bit and uh, come to find out he had listened to a lot of gospel music. Wow. He said, don't you guys make records? Wow. And we said, well, we used to with our yeah. family. Mm-hmm. He said, yeah. So, so yeah. you know, it was a, a really good experience just to kind of interact with yeah. him a, a little bit. And it's fun. I hate to name drop, but that's who our clients are. Is there something that you've learned through your years in this business? Just something that you both have kind of learned how to do business in this industry? Well, you've probably heard this saying before, but our dad taught us this. Never promise what you can't deliver. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And always deliver more than you promise. Mm. And that's been kind of our motto Mm -hmm. since we've been in business. Don't promise somebody something that you can't deliver. If somebody calls and and wants a bus, don't tell them they've got one. And then when the day comes for them to leave, it's not there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then when that bus shows up, hopefully it's going to be even better than what they 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 were expecting. And and Mm -hmm. that. That's how we got from two 1965 model buses to our career now, our, so our where we are now, yeah. our fleet. It's good. And, you know, relationship is mm-hmm. so important in this industry. You know, that trust that you build with the relationship with your managers and clients, so critical. We learn that as, as you go along in the business world, to its relationships are key. And then I've also learned that being in business, my brother's a pretty good deal, man. Yeah. I'm telling you. You guys grew up <laughs> probably sharing everything, right? Oh, yeah. Your brothers. We had the first stereo together, and then when we got old enough, we had the first car. And we, we always realized that we could have more together. It, it, it evolved, and it is great. I mean, I trust my brother. I know how he's going to do business. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. I don't have to worry about somebody taking advantage of anybody or, or even me and my family. He's yeah. got my best interest at heart. And I have his best interest. So and I'm sure that you guys have found your lane. Like you go to work every day and do your thing. Mm-hmm. And then you do your thing every day. And so yeah. obviously there's times where we come together and, and figure things out together. But you fo- you have your role. Right. And you have yours. Right. Uh, speak to that just for a second, just so we can kind of understand how that works with you guys. Yeah, and that is true because early on we would ride around in the same van together here in Nashville picking up parts and doing a little bit of everything. See, Mike, they yeah, rode yeah. in a van too. Oh, yeah. And You're then, the only one that hasn't <laughs> okay, done that. Okay, I'm going to ride in a van. <laughs> Yellow van. It was, it was bright. But we realized, we talked about it, we could get more done if we separated and yeah. went. maybe one went to get the part and the other did 
something else on the phone or working on the bus. So that was early on, but we still speak into each other's roles. It's very important that he knows what I'm dealing with, and it's great to be able to turn to somebody that's been in the bus business for 40 years and ask their opinion on something yeah, right. and they get their input. And so that's, that's vital. And if one of us, let's say we're trying to make a decision, once we've made a decision based on the information we have, we just go with it. We don't look back. We don't look back. Even if it turns out that maybe, you know, we didn't make money on that deal or wasn't the best decision, we just go back to what we knew at the time. And then we just let it go, you know, and we learn from it. Here, and, and so when there's a, there's a very rarely conflict, but if there is any decisions to be made that are pretty critical, the one that has the most passion about that issue is the way we go. Wow. That's the, usually the way we go. Mm-hmm. And it can be him sometimes and me the other. Wow. But if and, we can't agree on it, we just don't do it. Yeah. Right. That's, That's when and, you just say there's something not right. If we can't come to an agreement on it, then it's just we step away from it. And then we look later and we go, you know what? That's why we couldn't move on that. Thank you guys so much for joining us, Trent, Joey, Hemphill Brothers. What, what an hour. Where can people find you on the web? Is there anything that you want to point people to? Well, hemphillbrothers.com is our web address. and uh, we, we have an Instagram account, mm-hmm. you know, Hemp Hill Brothers, and okay. you can see some of our coaches there. And so, Just search yeah. us on YouTube yeah, as well. YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, you have a great YouTube channel with a bunch of visuals, right? right. So, right. so people mm-hmm. can kind of come and look yeah. at your buses. And oh, yeah. You've got some videos of different things. And sure. so on YouTube, yeah. Hemp Hill Brothers Coach Company. Yes. And then on the internet, hemphillbrothers.com. And so, guys, thanks again for your time today. We're so grateful. This show was created to enlighten you with some fascinating behind the scenes conversation and to entertain you with stories from the road. One of our favorite parts is what we call your roadmap for life. In each episode, we will share some wisdom and truth while bringing hope and encouragement to you. Now, let's see what the guys have for us in today's roadmap for life. The only comfort that I can take is that when I look in my life, things that have been bad in my life or whatever, The comfort that I have is when I look back, I can then see what God was doing in my life. And so that's the comfort that I take right now with, you know, the tours that are not going and, you know, all the things that are going on in this world. I know that God's hand is moving in the affairs of the world and in my life. So I'm a believer. My brother is as well. So we have a firm foundation of uh, belief system that we built our life on in our not only our business life but also personal lives but you know what i've learned is if you will invite god into even in your business decisions and he's a businessman too you know and if you treat people with those principles in mind that things will work out and they will see your heart in that matter even if if you have issues with a specific client or whatever you can work through it Again, we're just thankful to be here to be able to share our our story. Mike, thanks for joining me again this week, my friend. Thank you, Eric. That does it for this episode of Everything But The Show. Make sure you tune in next week, same time, same place. Make it a great week. And thanks for listening to Everything But The Show. Well, that does it for this episode. We hope that you've enjoyed listening as much as we've enjoyed recording it. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, we'd sure love to hear from you. If you have any topics that would interest you or maybe future guest ideas, please pass them along. You can visit us on the web at everythingbuttheshow.com where you can send us a message from the contact page. Or better yet, just email us at everythingbuttheshow at gmail.com. Be sure to take a few minutes while you're there to check out our partners like Compassion Live, Proper Management, CTSAVL, Belmont University, and more. Of course, be sure to like, follow, comment, and share us on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, at Everything But The Show. We'd be so grateful if you'd help us share the show with the world. Please take a minute to leave us a review. The show is produced by Daniel Myers and edited by Aiden McKernan. Our technical director is Michael Brooks. Be sure to tune in next week as we continue exploring the road and having great conversation about life behind the scenes of the music industry. On behalf of Eric Kilby, Mike J, and the entire team, we say thank you. We'll see you right here next week as we talk about everything but the show.